In Alhamdulillah, Nahmiduhu wa Nasta'inuhu wa Nasta'gfiru wa Na'udhu Billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina Man yahdihi Allahu falamudillala wa man yudlil falahaliyala wa ashadu an la ilaha illallahu wahtahu la sharika la wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amma ba'd fa inna astaqal hadithi kitab Allah wa khayru hadhi hadhi muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru l'umur muhdathatuha wa kula muhdathatan bid'ah wa kula bid'atan dalala all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Lord of all the worlds. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls and from the evil of our deeds. Whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can lead him astray. And whomever he leads astray, there's no one that can guide him. I testify to the fact that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is alone without any partners and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's servant and his messenger. As for what follows, the best speech is the Qur'an. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. And that even the things in our religion is every new innovative practice. All innovative practices are misguidance and all misguidance leads to the hellfire. Today, my brothers, briefly, I want us to look at something known as the Muslim's Survival Guide. In trying times of fitna, in trying times of evil widespread, in trying times of calamity and misfortune, the Muslim needs a survival guide. And Abi Umayyata al-Sha'bani Qala Ataytu Aba Tha'laba Radiyallahu anhu Fi qawlihi ta'ala Alaykum anfusakum La yadurrukum man dalla Idha ahtadaytum Faqala Amma wallahi lakad sa'awtu anha Rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Faqal Bal i'tamaru bil ma'roof وتناهوا عن المنكر حتى إذا رأيت شح مطاع وحواء متابع والدنيا مؤثرة وإجاب كل في رأي برأيه ورأيت أمر لا بد لك منه فعليك نفسك ودع أمر أوان فإن وراءكم أيام الصبر فَمَنْ صَبَرَ فِيهِنَّ قَارِدَ عَلَى الْجَمَرِ لِعَمَلِ فِيهِنَّ أَجْرَ خَمْسِينَ رَجُلٌ يَعْمَلُونَ مِثْلَ عَمَلِهِ قَالُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ أَجْرُ خَمْسِينَ مِنْهُمْ قَالَ أَجْرُ خَمْسِينَ مِنْكُمْ Abu Umayyah al-Shahbani said, I came to Abu Tha'laba and said, how do you understand the verse? O oh, you who believe, take care of your own selves. If you follow the right guidance, no hurt can come to you for those who are in error. He said, I asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about it. And he said, enjoin good upon one another and forbid one another from evil. But if you see overwhelming stinginess, Desires being followed, this world being preferred to the hereafter. Every person with an opinion feeling amazed with it, and you realize that you have no power to deal with it, then you have to mind your own business and leave the common folk to their own devices. After you will come days of patience, during which patience will be like grasping a burning piece of coal. And when one of you does good deeds, we'll have a reward like that of 50 men doing the same deed. They said, O Messenger of Allah, 50 men among themselves? He replied, 50 men from yourselves. This hadith is authentic, collected in the Tirmidhi ibn Imaja and others. Some benefits of this topic, my brothers, is that the scholars have placed this hadith under chapter headings 
how to interact with the dregs of society. And when enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong is to be abandoned, meaning you don't give nasiha, you just leave the people as they are. And in another chapter highly, a scholar, he put it, what Allah gives to those who obey him. This hadith, my dear brothers, is proof of prophethood for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As he spoke about something that would happen in the future during his time and is happening today. Since these things have started happening, life has become difficult for those who are trying to adhere to their religion. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said at the end of times, people's hearts will be divided and they will split up into sex and thus mistreat each other. The verse, oh you who believe, take care of your own selves. If you follow the right guidance, no harm can come to you for those who are in error. This verse refers to the people who will come after the Sahaba. They will be overwhelmed with stinginess, immersed in their temptations and evil desires. They will give preference to this world to the hereafter. And every person with an opinion will feel satisfied with it. Thus such people will not accept advice. The verse, my brothers, all you who believe, take care of your own selves. If you follow right guidance, no harm can come to you. For those who are in error, Abu Jafar al-Tabari in his tafsir said, O oh, you who believe, focus on yourself and rectify yourself by doing deeds that protect you from the punishment of Allah. Practice acts that bring you closer to Him, and hence no harm can come to you from those who are in error. Those who are in error are the people not following or traveling the right path. You will not be affected if you are guided and believe in your Lord. Obey Him in what He commanded you to do, and stay away from what He has prohibited you from. Consequently, you avoid the haram and enjoy the halal. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, shuhun muta'a. He said that when you see overwhelming stinginess, when you see the majority of the people being stingy and tight-fisted, this type of stinginess in his hadith, my brothers, it is not only related to money, but having greed and collecting it. Greed and collecting wealth and not wanting to disperse it in zakat or in sadaqah with others and being stingy in all other charitable acts such as giving free food, free clothes, or even loaning a person something, etc. And whatever these people spend in charitable ways, inside themselves they consider it a loss. Then the Prophet said, you will see desires being followed. This means that you will see people following their evil desires and temptations and rejecting the clear guidance, acting just like animals, doing whatever they want, whenever they want, as if this is the call to freedom, or as if they've been liberated. These people, my brothers, are following their desires. And when you see the majority of people doing such things, then just avoid them. Akula Koli had a stuff for the Lawa too, boy, like. Alhamdulillah, you're up in Alameen, was Salatu was Salam, and the Khaira Nabi Rum was Salim, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised this was another thing that we have to look out for. He said, this world being preferred to the hereafter. This refers to people pursuing this worldly life by collecting wealth and abandoning good deeds. This is similar to how we see people intentionally setting their alarm clock at night for 6.30 a.m and deliberately missing the Fajr prayer. If we are to ask ourselves, look at the traffic at the morning prayer for Fajr. 
Look at the traffic. Now look at the traffic at rush hour for work. Don't you see what's happening? What's more is people will be doing whatever it takes to get a position, position of power, or to raise their status in this short-lived life in this world. This is parallel, my dear brothers, to people who are cheating and offering bribes to reach their objective. As they say to themselves, the means justifies the end. Every person with an opinion feeling proud of it. When you see these people, my brothers, these are the people you'll see given verdicts from their own desires and whims and feel amazed with themselves. They don't regularly return to the scholars, nor the Qur'an, the Sunnah, and the consensus of this Ummah to check their understanding. Besides, if they do, then they rely on their own understanding and interpretations. Hence, whatever they view as good, although it might not be, then they consider it good and thus don't accept correction or advice. This is identical to the pandemic that we have on these podcasts or these YouTubers open up channels and discussing issues which they are not qualified to deal with. Sadly to say, some of these individuals have even added the title Sheikh to their names. Nasallallahu al-Afiyah. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and you realize you have no power to deal with it, then you have to mind your own business and leave the common folk to their own devices. At this phase, my brothers, this is when public sinning is widespread. This is when we see people befriending the kuffar. And in fact, and sometimes you see that they might even be assisting them in their evil more than what they're doing for Islam. Public sinning will be widespread. People taking a different path. You will not be able to address these people as some of them will have or do have authority over us and advising them could cause us more harm. Other people will feel as though you are judging them and you have no right to do so when in fact you are only trying to help their souls. This is what happens when these people become immersed in the ma'asi and the disobedience that when you advise them, they say, you don't have the right to judge me. Who are you? If you tell a sister, fix your hijab, your hair is showing. She responds back to you, you're not my father, you're not my husband, but a deen and a siha. When you see the majority of the people traveling this path, you keep your mouth shut, you mind your business, stay away from them. When this occurs, mind your own business. And you don't sin publicly or privately. Minding your own business, my dear brothers, also includes worrying about yourself and those under your care. I mean, focus on yourself, your family, and your children. After you will come days of patience, during which patience will be like grasping a burning piece of coal. During these days and times, my brothers, one must remain patient in being obedient towards the law. Being patient is the only way to salvation in this time. The words grasping a burning piece of coal displays the difficulty a patient person will encounter when trying to do the right thing. Reflect over how hard it is to touch something while it's burning. Just touch it. Then imagine trying to place it in the palm of your hands. How long could you hold it there for? This informs us that everywhere around us, where we go, we're going to notice misguidance. We're going to notice misguidance being prevalent. We're going to notice temptations being followed. Misguided callers amazed with themselves on their large, large platforms of followers, leading people astray while they themselves are astray. The Prophet, he gave us good news at the end of this hadith. And he said, and one who does good deeds will have the reward like that of 50 men doing the same deed. And the Sahaba, they said, O Messenger of Allah, 50 men from among themselves 
He replied, 50 men from among yourselves. Sheikh Izzuddin ibn Abdus Salam, he said, this implies that actions give a person nobility and that the strangeness of Islam at the end of times will be like the strangeness of it in the beginning when the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in was with the Prophet bringing Islam. The Prophet in this hadith, my dear brothers, he gave an edict, he gave a fatwa that it is better that we distance ourselves from such people when we notice these things happen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us in the times of fitna. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us in the times of fitna. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us Islam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us with our ihsan. Ya muqallaf al qulub thabbi qulub in ala deenik. O oh, changer of the hearts, allow our hearts to be firm on your religion. Ya musarrif al qulub, sarrif qulub na ala ta'atik. Rabbina atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al nar wa qamasana.